Please don't break. Please don't break. Please don't break. Please don't break. Oh, it broke. The truck you see behind me is a 95 GMC Suburban. It's got the 5.7 liter throttle body injected motor, which is a good motor. It just idles like crap. So I've been trying to figure out why it's idling so terribly. It just idles really rough, like something is about to shut down or burn up or something like that. If you follow my channel, you'll know that I've been going through a couple of things that I thought could be the reason for the rough idle. But as of recently, I actually saw a video by a fellow YouTuber who goes by the name of Chris and let's just say he fixes things on his channel. I think you'll know who I'm talking about. He is one of the largest automotive YouTubers, if not the largest automotive YouTuber on YouTube. And he just so happened to just release a video talking about how to get your car to idle better. The funny thing is, he goes through and shows how to clean your idle air control valve. Now, his vehicles are Ford-based vehicles. Mine is GM. But I'm sure idle air control valves are idle air control valves, and they kind of all do the same thing. The other interesting thing is, when he uploaded his video to YouTube, I just so happen to already have ordered a brand new idle air control valve and a new oxygen sensor, both by AC Delco, both original equipment. So what do you say, instead of taking my current idle air control valve, cleaning it and putting it back in, we just go ahead and install the brand new one as well as that brand new O2 sensor. I'm not even sure this is the problem they're just cheap enough, and for me to do it myself, I'm saving boatloads of money, and so I figured, why not just buy the brand new parts and have brand new parts on my truck? So here are the brand new parts. We have our O2 sensor in this box and our brand new idle air control valve in this box. And here is that brand new O2 sensor, and here are the part numbers for that. And there is the brand new IAC. It does come with a little cap to protect the end of it. And you can see it also comes with a gasket. And that right there is what a brand new idle air control valve by AC Delco looks like. Here are the part numbers in case you're interested. The first thing I'm gonna have to do to get to the IAC valve is to remove this air cleaner. With that air cleaner now removed, I can see the original idle air control valve right there. I bought this truck from the original owner with just 46,000 miles on it, so I'm fairly certain this valve has never been replaced. Like I said, I don't even know if this thing has anything wrong with it, but we're gonna pull it out and see how dirty it is. And just as a side note, make sure you're very careful with these plastic plugs. This plastic does get brittle with the constant heat cycles of driving the vehicle, especially this one that's over 25 years old. I barely touched this clip and it broke right off. So I'm now going to just remove the plug. And now that that plug is removed, I can take my adjustable wrench and remove this IAC. Try to see what size this thing is. Looks like maybe one and a quarter inches or 32 millimeters there. Oh yeah, nice and loose. So in my case, this valve was very loose, but yours may not be. So just be careful taking it out. You don't want to shear it off. And there she is, the original idle air control valve to the truck, which actually doesn't look very dirty at all. So this probably was just fine, but what we'll do is throw in the brand new one and see if anything changes. Here we are looking into the hole where the idle air control valve goes, trying to see if I see any buildup of dirt or soot or anything like that. And to be honest, I don't really think it looks too bad in there. I had my light up here shining down inside, that's why I was able to get some light coming out of there. Really doesn't look too bad. But who knows, maybe these things can just fail by being old? Maybe the spring can get weak or something like that? I don't know. Regardless, I'll keep this old one around in case I ever need it. Definitely get it going by hand, that way you don't cross thread anything. And judging by the fact that my original one was barely tight, I'm just gonna give this probably a quarter of a turn. Something like that. And because I'm me and I just can't leave well enough alone, I decided to try to glue that little clip back on that broke off. There you can see I just put it back together and hopefully that'll dry and actually not break off again once I push this clip back in. I use this stuff called Rapid Fuse by DAP. It seems to be pretty good. So the clip on that plug is now curing. I'm gonna give it about 30 minutes before I attempt to plug it back in. 
In the meantime, I can get under the truck and replace that O2 sensor. Now, I know some of you right now are saying, wait, just start it up with the IAC and let's see if that changes anything. Well, for me, I have both parts here. I'm going to change both parts regardless of whether both parts are bad. So it doesn't matter whether it was one part or the other that makes my truck idle better, if it does. These are two very cheap and very easy parts to replace. So I just wanna get it done. I don't wanna to have to start my truck and go through the cycle of trying to determine if the new IAC you know, improved anything. I just wanna replace both parts, then I can start my truck, drive it around, try to recreate the rough idle conditions that I normally get. And if it's cured after replacing just these two parts, I'm gonna be stoked. By the way, these are two parts, like I said, that are cheap and easy to replace, and no one ever really thinks about replacing these parts. That's why I don't care if they're officially bad or not. This truck's 25 years old, which means these parts are 25 years old, which means they can be replaced, and this truck will be happy for it. Inside the box with the O2 sensor came this copper anti-seize. Just gonna put a little on there. A dab will do ya. And that's probably good. Okay, so here under the truck, we can see my factory O2 sensor there. And of course, the wiring harness is a little harder to get to right here on the passenger side, just above the transmission. Okay, so the hope is I can get this O2 sensor out without a fight. These things are usually practically welded in there, but due to the extreme low mileage of my truck, and I don't really see too much rust or corrosion here on my exhaust, this thing might not be too bad to get out. Oh, that was very easy. Was that it? Okay, so that's turning very simply. All right, so I got the wiring harness disconnected already, and this thing is basically just coming out by hand. So not too difficult whatsoever. And there she is. And a quick comparison between the old and the new just because they definitely have changed the design of this thing quite a bit. You can see this original was made by, I'm guessing that AC means AC Delco. And this new one is obviously AC Delco. I showed you the box and it is made in Japan, which is interesting. To install the new one, we simply just push it into place. and screw it in. There is the new O2 sensor fully installed and plugged in. And last but not least, we will plug this thing in now. It hasn't quite been 30 minutes, but uh, we're probably good. Let's go ahead and plug this in and see how she goes. Please don't break, please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. Oh, it <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Okay, I thought I'd show this to you for anyone who thought that glue is what failed, and actually you can see the glue joint is still there. It just broke again right above it. So that just goes to prove how brittle this plastic really is. Not that big of a deal. This plug can still go in and work just fine. I'll just have to fashion a way, maybe with some zip ties or something, for this to definitely not come out. Maybe something like that. I've got a zip tie around the body of the IAC itself, and then you can see another zip tie here holding the clip into that zip tie. So two zip ties making this a pretty secure connection. This clip will not back out at all with this setup. Now that's obviously definitely not ideal. I wish that clip didn't break. I tried to fix it, it broke again in a different spot. So there's just nothing I can do about that. I got that all put back together. And the last thing I'm doing, just in case, is disconnecting the negative side of the battery for about a half hour. The theory behind that is within that half hour, the computer hopefully has time to kind of reset itself, reset any codes that may have been stored in the system and possibly reset that idle air control valve and any measurements that it would have been getting off of the old O2 sensor. You know what I mean, just kind of refreshing everything. All right, so everything is back together and the battery is reconnected. The only thing left to do now is to start the truck and hope it doesn't blow up. Here we go. Okay, we can see my RPMs are just over 1,000, maybe 1,100 RPMs right now, which seems pretty normal. What didn't seem normal was right when I started it, the RPMs kind of stayed very high for a little longer than normal, but that may have just been, you know, maybe that idle air control valve kind of readjusting itself, maybe the computer relearning with the O2 sensor there in the exhaust. So we'll see how this thing does here in a minute once it's fully warmed up.
We are out here driving around trying to figure out if my truck is idling any better than it was before. So far my preliminary thoughts are, yes, it seems to be idling much smoother than it did before. I've only been driving it for about five minutes now, so I'm not gonna sit there and say that's the final conclusion, but when I sit here at a stop sign, definitely smoother, definitely smoother than it used to do before. Now, I'm not a professional mechanic, but I know after you change a few sensors and disconnect the battery like I did, you have to give the computer time to kind of relearn everything. And that is why I'm out driving now. I'm just trying to kind of take it easy, driving around so the truck and the computer can kind of relearn what it has to learn. I mean, who knows? Maybe one of those sensors was just malfunctioning due to age. I don't know. Maybe it just was maybe partially malfunctioning, maybe not giving a full signal that it was supposed to be giving. We'll see, I guess only time will tell. But right now I'm going to drive around just a little bit just to give it the benefit of the doubt, just to have this thing kind of relearn whatever it is it has to learn. I know I've said that a few times, but uh, then we'll stop and idle for a bit while in drive so that there's a load on the motor. And I should be able to tell very easily if it has changed at all. Okay, so I just stopped, I'm still in drive. My truck is idling very smoothly. My electric fans just kicked on. I have the windows down, I don't have the AC on, but my truck does seem to be idling a lot smoother than it used to. Definitely, I can definitely feel a much improved idle. My RPMs, I don't know, it seems to be in the somewhat the same spot, but I don't know, it, it's just idling smoother. Maybe the computer is sensing different readings from that O2 sensor. Maybe the fuel air mixture is better than it was before. I don't know, two sensors down, it's idling better. Okay, well here you can see my RPMs and they do seem fairly normal to me compared to what they were before. But I can tell you right now, sitting here in drive, so there's a load on the engine, I also have my electric fans that are running right now to cool the thing down. It is absolutely idling smoother than it was before. Absolutely, that's a definite. The real question comes when I turn on my actual air conditioner. So let's do that now. Okay, now that's very interesting. I just watched my RPMs kick up a little bit like 50 RPMs or maybe even 100 RPMs when I kicked my air conditioning on and it didn't used to do that. I don't know if now the sensors are allowing it to sense different things and so the RPMs kicked up as they should to support the extra load, to help the alternator to produce more power to run the electric fans and all that stuff. But I'm sitting here in drive as if I was at a stoplight in drive AC's going on level two there. I have multiple loads on, my headlights are on, and the truck is idling pretty dang good. All right, well, I'm not gonna say the idle is absolutely perfect, as smooth as a new car, but it definitely has improved. Absolutely, it has improved. We saw just how much of an improvement Chris had in his video just by cleaning his IAC valves. I got a brand new one in here. Not only did I put a brand new one, I put a brand new O2 sensor. Overall, I can tell the truck is just driving better, let alone idling better. Now, like I said, it's not perfect, but it's definitely improved, and that's good. That means I didn't just waste a bunch of money on two sensors that I didn't need. Obviously, these two brand new sensors are doing a better job than the original sensors were, so I'm happy about that. Not only that, this is a 25 year old truck, so I'm happy to throw a few parts at it here and there whenever I feel like it needs it. I have a few more things I wanna take care of on this truck to try to get that idle even smoother. One of them has to do with the throttle body. I think I'm gonna replace both injectors as well as rebuild that entire injector setup under the hood there. So hopefully this video helped you in some way or at least entertained you. If it did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up for me if you could. Subscribe if you're not already. And for One Road, I'm Jimmy and I will see you in the next one.